and daughters of God. Now, are you ready to declare that I am a child of God? Are you ready? Yeah. Let me see you put your hands together like this. Let me see you clap your hands. back to our children's service how have you been how was your week yeah i know we are back last week we had our dads on the set this week we have our moms some of our moms are here also to talk to us we are in our family talk time pastor robert is my name and with me would you like to find out who they are let's give him a chance and opportunity so they can let us know who they are where the fellowship from and then we can continue our conversation. Welcome, moms. Happy Thank you. and belated Mother's Day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we celebrate Mother's Day. I wonder why, but first tell us who you are, and then we can talk. Yes, I'll start from right here. I can't tell them your name. I don't know. My name is Lisa Simwe. I'm married to Edoda Simwe. I'm a mother of three and celebrate from Watoto Church Kansanga. To the church, Kansanga. Woo -hoo -hoo. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My name is Sanyo Peace Kariyevala, married to Kariyevala Davis. Today we've made nine years and 13 days. Wow, wow congratulations. Happy anniversary to nine years in marriage. Yes. Uh, we have three children, one beautiful girl who is about to make eight years. And two handsome boys. One is five years, then our last is 18 months. Wow. wow. I go to Bugolobi Church. I serve with Sisterhood Ministry. And I host a cell, the adult cell. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for serving. I think your husband was here last week. We are glad to have you here. Welcome. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, my name is Marie Mwesigwa. I'm married to Dr. Richard Mwesigwa. Together we have two children, Caleb, 
11 years old, and Kayla, 13 years old. Um, we celebrate at Watoto Church in Tinder. Glad Welcome. to be here. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you for being here. Yes, mommy. Uh, thank you. My name is Brenda Kalebo Mkasa. I'm married to Ronald Mukasa. And we have three children. Isaiah is 14, Etho is 11, and Nehemiah is 6. Wow, welcome, moms. Last time I had dads here, and they didn't give us details of how old their children are. Dads were very simple. I have three. I'm at Bukolobi. Next. So we are glad to have moms here. And mom, let us start talking. I can see there are some details coming out. Do you have responsibilities? Last week we read from Genesis, and God chose Abraham so that he can direct and lead his family. Today we are talking to our moms. Moms, do you have responsibilities? What is a responsibility for a mother? Our children do not know, but we know we have mothers. Can you tell us? At least tell us. What are the responsibilities? Uh, we have quite a number of responsibilities. Actually, even when you look at the children in the lower sections of school, they tell them what mothers do. But now let's go more into detail. Mothers, first of all, we are there to support the fathers. The fathers as the leaders, as the vision bearers, we support them. We nurture the children. We take a very good care of the children. Ensure you have a meal, a hot meal all the time. Uh, those are some of the responsibilities. Maybe uh, someone else can pick up from there. Okay, I wanted to ask something uh, to embark on what you said. Last week we had dads and they told us they, are, they must be having a vision. So you are there to support through that vision. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. Then you, do you, you are the ones who cook the meals on our tables and we are able to eat. We try as much as possible to do so. And when we are not able to do so, we usually delegate to a person who is more than able to deliver the meal. But we ensure that that meal is there. Thank you, mommy. Thank you. Have you had that children, responsibilities of moms? You support and you make sure our time is uh, okay. Uh, happy. Yes, mommy. Any, any other responsibilities of moms? Well... Uh, as she has said, uh, there are so many, but uh, another one I can maybe talk about is to make sure, uh, one of the, my responsibilities as a mother at home is to make sure my little children are really nurtured well, mm. like as the Bible tells us, that nurture the children in the way of the Lord. Mm. The same way, I have to make sure I teach my children good behaviors, discipline and and respect because yes. if you don't respect people around you you don't respect community then then no one will respect you as well so we have to teach our children to be respective and of good discipline thank you thank you so much i'm learning too children i hope you are learning remember proverbs 1 8 talked about sons listen to instructions of your fathers and teachings of your mothers so here mama has been talking about nurturing. It has to do with teaching, instructing, all those things, respect, get in there. Thank you. Yes, Mama Marie. Yes, Any th other? Thank you, Pastor Robert. Yeah, I'd like to take us to Genesis. When God created Adam, the first man, he said, it is not good for man to be alone. And so God created for him, Adam. One of our responsibilities as women is to be companions to our husbands, but even in the home. That's why you find that the mothers are usually the storytellers, they are present, they are providing companionship in our places. <laughs> so God created Eve for Adam. You need to remember that. So mothers are their companionship. They stay with the children, maybe when sometimes that's go to work. Okay, so you, that's your responsibility to be... Uh, Moms, we love you. Please don't go anywhere. Moms, stay with us. I hope you love your mom's children. Yes, mommy. Brenda, yes. Anything you can remember? Yes. Um, in addition to nurturing and teaching the children, mm. I think one of the other key things is to teach them the ways of the Lord and to pray for them. Yeah. That they will um, come to understand what God has created them for and they, they will thrive in the giftings that God has given them. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Moms, thank you. 
that last time told us to love God for himself and to show the children what to do. Now moms teach us how to love God. They don't just love God for themselves. They teach us. That's why the majority of the times we come to church with our moms. Almost all the time. Dads, you must come along. But today our mothers are speaking to us. So just like we did last time, I mean, I uh, seated thinking, as you do so much for us, and we are grateful for you moms, as children, are there things you, ex you expect of us as your children to do in response of what you're doing for us? Any things that you can tell us? Sometimes we do things and we don't know why we are doing them, but mm. today is the day we would love to know. What do you expect of us as children, our mothers? Um, one of the things we expect from the children is to listen. Is to listen, not to uh, listen to answer back, but to listen to understand. For example, I can tell you, you have to wash the dishes immediately after lunch. Don't say, mommy, no, I can still wash them at four o'clock. Yes, you could wash them at four o'clock. But there's a reason mommy is saying after lunch. Instead of saying, why don't you ask your mom, why should I wash the dishes immediately? And then the mom will tell you that when you wash them immediately, the sink is kept clean and some small creatures God created like cockroaches will not be in the what? In the sink. So children, you need to listen and listen to understand where your mom is coming from. Don't listen to answer back and be very crafty with an answer. That is one of our expectations as mothers. Thank you. Our dads told us to listen. Moms are telling us to listen. Children, why don't you listen? No, we listen, but we are learning more on how to listen. Thank you, mommy. Uh, another expectation is to have discipline. Discipline is a big word, but if I'm to break it down, uh, I mean to be, to be hoping at home. Like how our mama said, you hoping the aunt at home, let's say, to do house chores, uh, washing, uh, maybe cleaning utensils, it doesn't harm our dear children. Mm -hmm. By you hoping, you're learning. And if you don't engage, you will not learn. So we expect you to come in place with the aunties at home, the mom at home, and you also give assistance where possible. Let's say you can get a broom, clean the house, or get a rug, mop, or get, get, get a towel and clean the, the table. Yeah, that's discipline of hoping at home. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, mommy. Children, are you listening? We're expected to do our chores. Remember last week, dads told us we are stewards. Stewards of what God has given to us. Even the spaces, us contributing to that home is very important. Please don't get in trouble after you've heard this. Do what your parents are telling you. Thank you. Um, one of the things that we would like to see in our children is children who bear the fruits of the Spirit. Yeah. Mm. What do I mean? Um, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Yeah, the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Mm. They are so many, and those are the things that we want to see, but I want to focus on two, kindness. Mm. We want you to be kind children. Not just to people out there, but even in the home. What um, mommy has just been saying is that help people. You help people if you're kind, you know. Be kind to your siblings. Be kind to visitors that come to our homes. Be kind to the people you yeah. meet on the streets, you know. Be gentle. Then self-control. Self-control means that you are able to forsake something because you know that it's not maybe beneficial at that time or there will be another better time. You have the fruit of self-control. So we expect our children, as we raise them, to slowly grow in the fruits of the spirit, ever increasing. Wow, thank you, mommy. Mommy has talked to us. Not everything is for us. Some things we can stop for now. We'll get them later. 
How, as we're talking about the fruit of the Holy Spirit, I was wondering, but even the, an, a mango tree has one fruit, only the mango. You want us to have nine, mm. but thank you for helping us to remember one at a time, two, be kind. Do you want anyone to be kind to you? Mm. Be kind. Okay? And let's have self-control and interact with us. Thank you, mommy. Uh, thank you. In addition to wanting you to listen, please be respectful. I know sometimes you might have a varying opinion, but be respectful. Don't slam doors. Don't be rude to the people in the home. Don't be rude to your parents. Please be respectful. And um, yes, I want to emphasize, be kind, be nice to each other in the home. Shea. Thank you, Shea. <laughs> Shea and Shea. All right. Okay, moms, thank you. Thank you for for that. You need to be for what you are for us, because we wouldn't be this far without you. I'm wondering, I, I know we had in questions for the children coming in, but at the moment I don't want to go into the questions, because the next two weeks we're going to just be answering questions from our children. I am wondering, children are at home with their moms and dads, do you ever sit down with them as a family, maybe mommy and daddy, and you talk to them about your life experiences? Because one of them, one of the questions that came that I'm getting that from, they are wondering, they want to know their parents. They want to know who are you? Who are your, your parents' names? Where do we come from? We wonder, do they go to the village? Do they meet them? Are we protecting them? But in that hindsight saying, that question covered the multitude of many other things that they asked. Mm. And the question was, do we have family time? Children, do you want family time with your parents? Do you want to sit down and they tell you stories and you ask them questions? Do we ever do that, moms? How do you do it? Um, we do have family time and I personally enjoy family time because uh, as parents or as moms, we get... Uh, to know a lot of things about our children through family yeah. time. Yeah. Now, some, some moms, we can be busy. You have a career, you have other activities outside work, or you have an extra business. We need to craft a way of having family time. One of the things we do at home, I as a mother, I love dropping the children to school. Uh, some people have told me, no, you can get them on a shuttle, but that 30 minutes or 40 minutes we spend uh, in transit to school, they will tell me about themselves, about their teachers, about what happened at school, and the, 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 the conversations are very, very funny. And you, we get, I get to know the character of the children. And from what they are talking about, I usually also share an experience with them of what happened uh, when I was young, and sometimes they use slang that I am not aware of. Recently, they taught me a word G, and I said, what is G? They said, it is so good. If someone tells you your G, so that cool. you're so cool. I'm telling you. So it is during this time. Mm. Then when I look at my husband, he usually loves watching National Geographic with them. I don't even know why. But he loves putting for them those animals and tells them, oh, this is in this family. I don't really enjoy it, but I just sit along and, and, and let it. And, and the children are very happy because they have conversation of my dad says this about that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Thank you so much, mommy. Thank you. I wonder, other moms, how do you do it? How do you even invite the dads to be a part of it? Because I know the majority think that their moms do things, but they are dads. So ma you nurture, you help. How do you bring our dads to be part of these things? Well, uh, for the Kadieva lads, this is how we do it. Uh -huh. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll salute more to my husband that he's even doing it better than me, to confess. Um, we have a balcony, and we call it our home beach. Okay. Yeah, wow. so, so, yeah. So, evening hours when both of us are Mommy, told, first pause. You have a balcony. Do you put sand there and then you put water and you chill? It's a beach. Uh, like we have our mats. Okay. No, there's normal mats. Oh, but you we create. Have... Thank you yeah, very yeah, much, yeah, yeah. Mommy. Okay, I need to create yeah. a home beach. I'm coming. Yes, mm. like we carry our towels, sandals sometimes, but the mat, it's a mess. 
to be there. So, so we get out and we start talking okay. family issues. For example, me, what I bring on the table, we made it a must that every evening I come back, I have to find out like how their day was, okay. uh, the challenges they encountered at school, okay. how did they show kindness to their friends, like what is that, you know? You, you, you're like, this was good to me today and that which wasn't. Okay. And how did you come about that? Like how did you handle the challenge? Mm. And we've made it a habit every time I go back, these two good kids, they run to me and, and we start talking, mm. you know? We start our family jazz. Then at the beach, the what we do? Family jazz. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, yes mommy. And, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. And... Um, the, the other way how we do it, uh, the dad said it here that they do an evening walk. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, the evening walk, in most cases, I don't participate. But then when they come back, I'm like, oh, why did I miss? I don't just miss because I was home. Uh, ministry engages me every Sundays and other responsibilities. But what these kids do, they know I love flowers. So they just go and hunt for me, you know, flowers. So when they come back, we also start from there. Okay. On the flower beat, and we also do our session, mom to kids. I'm telling you, mom yeah. have details. Dads, we didn't even share all those details. <laughs> but it is amazing to hear things coming out. We can do these things, mommies and daddies, please engage us. Let's have family talks. We don't have to sit in the room, be on the dining table. We can do walks. You can create your own beach. You can have family jazz. I'm going to have family jazz. Oh, Marie, what do you do? How do you do it? We're learning from you people. Thank you, Pastor Robert. Um, one of the things that happens is that um, we try to have dinner together. Um, Very important. Um, mm. Because that is the meal where everyone can be at home. Hopefully, many times, sometimes it, it's not possible. Um, my husband may have to work late. And all the other meals, everyone is in wherever place they are. So once we're at the dinner table, people are able to speak. And after the dinner table, then it's devotion time and their stories. And that's when people start telling stories. I must say that uh, my husband is a better storyteller than I am. But at that point in time, we get, we get to talk and then we are able to share. And um, everyone leaves really feeling, you know, refreshed and, you know, ready for the next day. Wonderful. Thank you. As we are talking to your mothers, I had fathers. We are better storytellers. Let's keep telling stories. Thank you, Mommy. That is so good. Mommy Brent, how do you do it at home? How do you do it? Yes, I think we also, I also try to ensure that we have meals together, particularly supper. It helps to be able to have everyone at the same table and talking about how their day was. Uh, but the other thing that we've been trying to do is playing board games. Board games, yeah. Yes, the scrabbles, the ludo. Yeah, and I think usually it helps people to unwind and to get them to start talking and to have discussions. Just something that we do, we try to make time to do with the children so that everybody, you know, has a chance to talk and unwind and you get to hear what their thoughts are without the pressure of, now what did you do? Now go and do this. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so, so much. We're talking about these parents, children, because we need to have family talk time. That family talk time will sort out as many questions children have and also relating with their parents. Closing that gap knowing that we are loved not in just to rebuke in do but also as we do life together as families. Thank you so much moms for being here. As we close I'm going to give everyone one opportunity to tell us your own children and the children that God has given to us as a community, as a church, as a nation, what is that one thing you would love to live with them as your children? That one thing, um, I would love the children to know about Christ, about the God I believe in. Uh, we usually engage the children in prayer time so that they know what we are praying for and what we are praying about. Why? This is creating a seed of faith and this is showing the children that actually when you pray, when you give your time to God, 
God actually works. So that when they grow up, like what the Bible says, they will not turn from the God of their mother and father. Children, please do not turn away from God. Thank you, mommy. Thank you. Remember, Jesus saves. Yes, mommy. Uh, that one thing is respect your parents, be kind to everyone, and, and be loving. Yesterday, my boy of five years was telling us in cell, first do things of your living savior, then your other works will follow. I was so humbled. <laughs> Children, let's be kind to everyone and love our living savior. Do things of your living savior. And then others. I wonder what your living savior would like you to do. Do you read his word? Do you talk to him? That was so sweet. Wow, amazing. Mama Marie. Thank you. Um, two things I'd like to say. One is what Jesus told us when asked what's the greatest commandment. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. Wonderful. Number two is... Thy word, O Lord, have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Let's hide the word of God in our hearts because when we've hidden, when we've read it, understood it, memorized, and hidden it in our hearts, when we need it, it will come out and it will help us not to sin against God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mommy Brenda, lastly. Yes, I would like to say to the children, to all the children in the community, those who are watching today, um, to ask them to give their parents grace and to forgive their parents where we've made mistakes and to not make that fail, fail us in building a relationship, but to forgive their parents and allow us to grow together, to listen to their parents and to learn from them. Thank you so much. That's a very great reminder. Children, remember last week we, talked, we spoke about with our dads, we fail as parents. Forgive us, we have failed you. But also, let's continue to create the relationship. In fact, before we go, there are so many expectations of us. I want to pray for you that God and Holy Spirit will help you to live up to the expectations of our parents. But yet also our parents will live to live through their expectations. Can you humble yourselves and we pray together? Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for the opportunity you give us as families to do life together. We ask you that you will help us to live up to the expectations that you've set for us through our parents, but also the expectations our parents have towards us. Holy Spirit, may you help us every day to walk that journey. Even right now, I remember my friends that do not know you. My prayer is that you will convict them and talk to their hearts, that they will come to, sit, to know you as their personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 See you next week. We are just answering questions. Do you have a question? Write it. Write it down so that you might be able to answer that question. God bless you. Bye-bye. We love you. See you next week. Children are going to be singing a very beautiful song this morning. And this song basically means that we're going to be speaking the name of Jesus into our families. Why are we speaking the name of Jesus? Because his name is powerful. His name brings healing. His name brings life. His name has the power to break all kinds of chains. Has the power to break all kinds of strongholds. So we're going to worship him. We're going to praise his name. We're going to call upon him. So raise up your voice right now. Just raise up your voice and say, Jesus, come into my family. Jesus, I call upon you to come into my family. Bring power. Bring, bring life. Bring healing. Break every chain. Break every stronghold. Amen. Let's sing together. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. But light. Sing your name.
of Jesus from the mountains, from the streets, from our homes, and declare it into our families. Amen. We're going to sing it out because we want him to bring healing. We want him to bring life into our families. Are you ready? Yeah. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family. I speak the Yes. 